Hello everybody and welcome to the Hunter Gatherer channel and we're back in the honey room. Uh, it's the fall now, it's October 3rd and I have pulled all of my honey supers. Uh, I have 11 mediums and 8 deeps. Uh, I don't think that they're all full but we got quite a bit. I think there's probably, I'm approximating 600 pounds of honey this fall. Uh, so. This video, I just put out a video recently of my summer extraction. I'm not going to do a full extraction video. Uh, I'm going to do a video on rendering wax. I had somebody ask me about that. So we're going to start, just show a little bit of this, um, just how I get the wax initially and then how I render it. I'm going to show a little bit of the decapping and the process, but you can watch the video above here uh, for our extraction process. If you want to see that, uh, we're going to just kind of focus on collecting the wax and rendering the wax. Like I said, this video is about rendering wax primarily. Um, so it's going to be, how do I get the wax, what wax I'm using and, and then how to clean it up. So during the year, as you're going through doing your hive inspections, you'll see like bridge comb and burr comb and things like that. Um, where the, the bees have built from one box to the, to the next from frame to frame and they fill up the, the bee space there or from frame to frame the other way how they bridge them together um, and so you can see like on here on this box we've got some wax there and so when I'm going through my inspections I'll, I'll just kind of clean this wax up and, and collect that for a later time so as I'm going through this I'm going to also scrape the wax off the boxes and just make sure everything's kind of clean. So that's how you're going to collect wax throughout the season. You can just ball it up, throw it in a bag or something like that and save it until it's time to render a larger amount. Another way is um, with say like dead outs and things like that. You might have wax that is kind of gross. You want to clean everything out. You can get wax that way. Um, those That wax you're going to want to probably render separate from your capping's wax because this stuff is nice and clean. You're not going to have all the the chrysalis and all of the um, possible other um, dirt and things in it. So this is going to be just straight clean wax that you're not going to have to do too much to. And that's what this is. These are medium frames here and uh, I don't know if you can see how it's drawn out past the top bar and bottom bar. You can see that? It's out about three-eighths of an inch out of the sides on both sides. And it's that way because in a 10 frame, I put only eight or nine frames in there. So that has some extra B space or more than B space. And so they'll draw it out to where they can't fit anymore and then they'll cap it. So they'll actually draw the wax out past uh, where it would if you had 10 frames. Now this, I have uh, shown you before, but how we decap is we use this fillet knife. And if we're using deeps, we have this big like meat knife. Um, anyways, and it can really reach the whole frame. I'll show you on a deep later, we've got some of those. So, but this is just a, I think an 11 or 12 inch fillet knife. I go ahead and cut up first. And then I'm going to go down on it here to clean this whole area off. Like so. Many of you have had issues with uh, wax moth. If you haven't yet, you will. And if you have, you know how much of a pain in the butt it is. So, the thing is, is that wax moth, what they're really looking for is where the brood has been. So wherever eggs have been laid, it's been capped and, and uh, 
bees have emerged from. And you don't see that in this. This is more of a, looks like it's, it's pollen or darker honey in here. But I have some, and I'll show you it when I find it, that the queen had come up in and laid in in, the, uh, in my honey super, and then I saw that she did it. I went and found her, put her down below, and put a queen excluder in to make sure she didn't go back up there again. And once the, once the brood had emerged, uh, they filled it up with honey. And I found that if it's just clean honey supers that's only been honey in the, in the comb, the wax moth don't come for that. But once you have some that has a, a spot that she laid, they will go to that and uh, just decimate the frames. So, what I'm going to do this year is when I find those, I'm gonna put them to the side and I'm gonna, after I extract from them, I'm gonna actually scrape all of that wax out and uh, go ahead and render that wax as well and I'll put some wax back on those frames and reuse them but I'm going to try to keep it to where the, the wax moth don't get into our frames and we don't have to deal with uh, a mess later on. Here's one of the frames I was telling you about before. You can see that there was a uh, brood in there. It's really dark in the center, both sides. And so this, once I'm done extracting it, I'm going to just scrape all that wax um, into uh, probably not this container since this is the one that uh, I'm getting all the cappings in, but I'll probably scrape it into a different five gallon pail or something. And so that way it'll keep the wax moth out of this box that I put this frame in. But that's what they look like and that's what the wax moth are definitely looking for. This is the last frame and uh, as you can see there was brood in there, right? Wax moths would love this. So these two buckets are the two, four, six, six um, boxes worth of frames, either mediums or deeps, that had brood in them at one point. So out it goes. You were saying, man, that's a great frame. Swarm would come to that. It's got great bee scent on it. You could use that. But after having some boxes taken over by wax moth, I would rather them just build it back up. So I'm going to clean them all off, and then I'll apply some more wax to it. I decided to use the bulk tank this extraction and we've got it pretty much, well, let's see here. It's about that full right now. I don't know how much it holds. I'm thinking like 40 gallons. Anyway, we have that. Uh, these are the boxes that didn't uh, have brood in them. Nice and clean and ready to go. Uh, we'll just store those in the shop and not have to worry about wax moth, hopefully. And then we have these boxes that were the ones that had brood in them that we scraped out. These two buckets are wax from the brood uh, frames. And then we have a bucket full over there and uh, the whole um, decapping tank is, uh, box is full with the cappings. Um, and I'm gonna render this separate from this. But for now, I have some containers over here that I will pour the cappings in and I'm gonna put them outside and let the bees clean them up. Try to get as much honey off them as they can, kinda of dry them out. And then uh, we'll go into the rendering process. This is the stuff that was scraped out here and this is some of the cappings and this is another thing of cappings. I need a couple more totes because I've got another bucket of cappings in there too. I'm just going to let them clean these off. Uh, I know they can tear up the wax a little bit, but half of the boxes don't have any wax. and I just didn't want to get into the bees um, 
to pop these boxes on top. I don't have any time today to do that. And I figure I'll let these set here for a couple days and let them clean them all off. And, you know, we've got other pollinators besides just the, the honeybees. And I know there's a lot of yellow jackets that are coming into it too, but we'll let them clean it all off. Let them get this wax all pretty dry too. And I'll also bring the uh, extractor and the decapping tank out and uh, the bulk tank once I get that empty as well so they can clean all of that off. This is what happens when you put wet boxes out. Yeah, you get clean boxes, but a lot of your girls die too. So, if you can, it would be better to just set your boxes on top. This is some of the really gross wax um, that I had from where all the dead bees were underneath the, the supers. It's full of bees and leaves and some other stuff, but there's still wax in there. And I'm showing you this way because I wanted to show what it looks like without trying the trick that I'm going to teach you. And what that is, is uh, I have, I bought some pantyhose, and uh, I saw somebody do this trick, so his wife gave him some of her old uh, stockings or pantyhose or whatever, and he stuffed the wax inside it, and all of the bees and all of the, um, dirt and junk all stays inside while the wax filters through. So you can see this is like a lot of bees and other things in there. And it's going to take quite a while to filter that out. It's not just bees though. You can see that is a lot of um, of like cocoons or whatever from the from the brood area so that stuff makes a mess too so I just went ahead and figured I'd show you this I'm gonna have to push that all through a screen and try to get the wax out at the same time both of those were of the brood comb that uh, I was trying to make sure that we don't get any wax moth in our uh, supers and such. So that's what those are. And then we have this and this are all cappings. These two are going to be much cleaner than this one. But this one I'm going to stuff into the, uh, the nylons and we'll see how it goes. And inside all this stuff, you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but there is a bunch of cocoons or chrysalis or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to take this as a piece of a nylon stocking. And I'm going to take this whole bucket full and I'm going to jam it right in this thing. See if we can fit this whole bucket in here. Got an idea. Get them once in a while. Oh, I just ripped a hole on it. I gotta run in my stocking. All right. Uh oh. Stay up there. I'm trying to do something here. There we go. 
It'll kind of open it for a little while anyways. So I think this is going to hold all of this like slum gum, I think they call it, and all of the, all of the, gotta get that stuff pushed down here, um, pollen and all of everything else. Come on. We're going to call it on that one. I'm going to try another one and try to not get a run in it. These are no nonsense. We don't mess around. We don't want any nonsense going on. Scissors. I'll start right down at the bottom this time see what happens. I'm just going to go... All right, I got them all bagged up. And these are size B, if anybody knows what that means. I didn't think about sizes. But size E is the biggest they show. And I should have went with them. Then they could, you know, they'd be bigger. But we're gonna kind of spread this out. I think we're gonna do good. It's gonna do well. This is just about hot enough. Cleaning off my utensils. They still had some wax on from the last time. Metal conducts heat. I remember that from science class. It's like a little science experiment with the honeybees all the time. I got about a almost a gallon of water in there and I'm gonna hope that the water does its trick I'm just gonna do one of these numbers get this one keep it up out keep that one out close it up we'll check it in a while let's see how this is doing It's definitely working. All oh, that pretty wax is coming out of there. Gotta get these guys down in. So I don't know if this is the best way to do this, especially if you have a large amount. But it definitely makes makes quicker work of it than if you uh, are just pouring it through a screen. This is what I got afterwards, this clump of all those dead bees and everything, but there's still, there's still wax in there. I might do one more Try to render it again. I don't know how much wax is left in there, but there's a bunch. So I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to put this uh, 
smaller one right in here, get a little warm so it'll let the everything drain through and won't pl plug it. The first time I ever poured through a screen, it was cold and it plugged right up. So I learned to put the screen in the hot wax or whatever. And so that way the screen will heat up and it'll let everything flow through. So this stuff is just like what I showed you on that piece of uh, plastic bag there. And it's going to have some wax in it still. But I'm getting most of it out here. Not all of it. Uh, like I said, I, with that other stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it through one more time and try to figure out how to get everything out of it. That's... Uh, one way to get it started anyways, I'm going to put that right down there with everything else. We'll get to it. And do it again with this one. Pretty sure it's all heated up and we're just going to go for it here. There was a little bit of uh, stuff in the pan from what I had scraped off of the um, screen and what was left in here from the previous stuff. But everything else stayed in those nylons. So much easier. I emptied this uh, screen out three times, four times when I did the other. And I got this little spoonful here. I would say that that was a lot nicer of a way to do it. So try the nylon trick. If you have a lot of uh, wax from the brood chamber or whatever, and uh, It'll save you a lot of time and effort. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna put the uh, cappings in the nylons too, because man, that thing, that works slick. So there's a lot of bees in here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in there without, and just to see how much difference. Now this is just cappings, so it should, be super clean, but I bet we get a a half a strainer or so of, of just bees out of it. Just scoop some in there so it doesn't splash me right off the bat. There we go. Quite a bit of wax there, but you'll be surprised how, how much it cooks down size-wise, volume or whatever, there's a lot of air in that. Anyway, let's cook this down the rest of the way, and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we pour this one and how much we get from the dead bees in our screen. I'm hoping this bucket is big enough but the other one isn't cold yet so gotta use what I got but I'm pretty sure it's big enough you can see all these dead bees in here and a little bit of other extras 
Oh, it's splattering everywhere. So that was the fairly clean wax, and that's how much extra stuff we've got. So I'm pretty amazed at the, the nylon trick. So here's my buckets. I had uh, <clears throat> combined some of the wax from two of the meltings. Uh, all, I did four meltings and got two buckets worth. So this is the water afterwards. Just kind of pour that out. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Oh baby, here it comes. Alright, <clears throat> got one block there, it looks pretty good. I need to scrape this stuff off, it's like dirt and propolis and whatever. Let's see what this other one looks like. That's the wax I got. I don't know how many pounds that is, but it's a pretty good, pretty good amount. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it. That's how I uh, render my wax. A lot of different ways you can do it. That's just one way. So I gotta tell you, I was pretty impressed with the pantyhose trick. So let me know if you guys have ever tried that before down in the comments below. If you would, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, that really helps the algorithm on YouTube. You hit that like button and subscribe button, helps them share the video with other people. So maybe other people will get to see how to render wax. Anyways, that's gonna be it. I uh, just wanna let you know, we love you. God loves you and we'll see you on the next one. Happy beekeeping and let me know how you render your wax down below. We'll see you. I'm not sure about the rest of you, but um, I swell up a little bit. It used to be terrible. Um, it's gotten better. But I still will swell up some, especially on a leg or a foot. And uh, it's been a while since I've been stung in the face. I try to keep a, a net on just in case. Um, but my first year of having the bees, about the first week, I went out to give them some sugar water. We had uh, gotten four, four nukes. And I came out with sugar water and I saw, you know, all the YouTube videos and stuff of all the tough guys and girls that don't wear any suit. So I went out there to feed them without a suit and one stung me in the forehead or in the temple and my eye swelled closed. Yeah, my eye was closed for a week and uh, it was pretty serious. Um, I called the doctor's office and said, hey, I must be kind of allergic. I just got stung. My eye swelled shut. I took some Benadryl. And they said, uh, I said, do you need me to come in? And they said, well, can you still breathe? <laughs> and I said, yes, I, I can currently breathe. Yes. Do you take any Benadryl? I said, yeah, I took a, took a Benadryl. And uh, they said, no, you need to take like two or three. And I said, I'm already in a coma. 
I can't take much of that stuff. It kicks my butt. And uh, I said, so when do you want me? Do I need to come in or not? And they said, well, if you stop breathing, come in. It still amazes me to this day that they said that. I think it's a little too late if you stop breathing, but that's just me. Anyway, but the more I got stung, they said either A, the more you get stung, the worse it's going to get, or B, the more you get stung, the better it's going to get. And I, the more I get stung, the faster the swelling goes down. So when spring comes along, I mean, I don't go out there to get stung on purpose, but when spring rolls along, then uh, I figure the first sting is going to get me started and uh, go from there. But this year, I got stung more than I have in a while. I don't know if it was being careless or not cautious enough or the bees were just grumpy or what, but 